Doing great. Awesome. So we're going to give people some time to actually log in and be able to join our live stream and stuff. But I'm glad that you were able to join us for the audio segment because I've been getting a lot of questions about audio. And I did put that in my tutorial that I have on the Nanlite USA channel right now. I wanted to include audio because obviously audio is really important. I mean, it doesn't matter how good someone looks if you can't hear them. I mean, there's no conversation to have. There's no content to be shared. Um, so in my opinion, audio in a lot of times could be even more important, you know? I 100% agree. I always make the analogy. If you ever seen a bootleg movie, you get a bootleg movie, the video might be really bad, but if you can hear it, you still watch the whole way through and like, Oh, that's, that looked terrible. But if you can't hear it and the video looks great, you're going to turn it off in two seconds. Yeah, totally. You won't actually watch it at all. Yeah. It's all about the message. Yeah. It's very important. It's so true. Um, so in my, the video that I made for Nanlite, I used some ceremonic gear. Thank you for supplying some of that stuff so that I could kind of improve my, my audio game in that one. Um, but I'm excited to do a longer conversation with you because I do emphasize in the video, like I know audio enough to do the stuff that I need to do for video to make sure I'm balanced, to make sure I'm recording separately for my DSLR, uh, to mic people, things like that. But I really, it's great to talk to someone like you who's an audio expert to really kind of dive into different ways that people can do this, you know? So first things first, I think we gave people kind of enough time to maybe jump in and join us and stuff before we start actually getting questions going. Do you wanna show us uh, your setup? Cause I know you have a few different setups going on right now. Sure, it's pretty crazy. Cause I'm what, the place I'm in is actually my, um, the playroom for my kids. Um, I'm just gonna <laughs> switch to the little, little camera here. I don't know if you, if you could switch it so that people can see it. Cause when I'm talking, I just don't wanna interrupt them. Uh, bear with me one moment. This is my little mixer setup that I have down here. And right. basically it, it consists of a smart rig UC going into, going into my laptop via, via okay. USB-C. I got the Blink system hooked up to it. I have a, um, I have a UW Mic 9 system hooked up, which I'm talking to now. I have an, pardon me for one second, an on-camera microphone, as you see above. Let me pull it off my tripod here. Your children's art, mi- of course. You got to have your children's art up there. Exactly. I have, I have my on-camera microphone here, the Ceremonic V-Mic Mini. As I move back, you'll see I have the, um, I have actually a, a Soundbird T3 on, no, just a normal mic stand, nothing crazy. And I have a couple of um, Nanlite lights, as you might see right here. I got a, the MixPad 27s and a couple of Kupo stands on it. And it, you could see, this is a this is where kids hang out. Bubble I guppies on the wall, a little bit of good. kids art. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, 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 my chair is actually a little a, a little workout ball. Of there's a, there's a, some more stuff, more, more kids toys. That, that and my, my my wife she's actually an editor so what we have over here is her little edit bay right now we're moving as you can see so there's boxes and stuff oh, we're actually trying to sell our house so there's boxes and stuff everywhere drum set but this is basically where where, where i do all my work f- for this type of live stream so it, it can literally be done anywhere it's really really the point i'm trying to trying to make yeah. um I have some ceremonic gear up on the wall there, as you see, some Benro and also some Nanlite gear as well. And my old DJ record box, which I put up there, you know, just for fun. You know, just wanted to, sh- to, sh- to show wh- what I'm doing and where I'm at. Let me make sure back up. I'm back. Your video looks great for, I mean, I'm impressed, man. You're an audio pro, but you're also, the video's looking good. Well, I watched that, that video you did previously about how, how to light and, um, I was actually sitting on the couch initially for this. And then, and then you said, oh, well, you need a couple of feet between yourself and, and the wall. And I was like, oh, I'll just sit on this little ball here and that'll be much better. I can get closer <laughs> I'm glad to I inspired it. inspired the ball. I'm glad that I inspired this new experience of sitting on a, on a ball and balancing yourself. It's perfect. Yeah. I don't know if you saw it, but um, my, my, my desktop here is just boxes. That's it. And then, of course, yeah, the laptop I right on top. Actually, yeah, because yeah. my desk is actually over there, and I wanted to create a set and a background for myself. And my desk is is a nice background to kind of have. But the irony is that I'm not at my desk. <laughs> yeah. It, I'm actually creating a setup in front of my desk. <laughs> I, I mean, I have two little kids. I have a two-year-old that just two, turned two and a four-year-old. And um, they're running around all day long. Um, the whole house is covered in food. There's food on my socks from stepping <laughs> on it. Um, it's it's crazy, but I have been able to take meetings and do meetings via via Zoom yeah. and other formats and um, doing a lot of Skype calls. And I'm always using microphones and, and head and headsets to get better sound. And certainly, I know that a lot of people are looking for that because uh, the sales are, are are really really reflective of that. People are yeah. looking for solutions for this time. 
Yeah. And I mean, I actually even asked you recently, I have a friend that's a therapist that's doing sessions at home and she has a cat that she said eight out of 10 uh, times she's doing a, a, like a client, like client thing. She actually is asked, is that a cat meowing in the background? And so I had asked you if there was something that she could do to like, kind of make it more directional. Like right now I'm using a, a ceremonic wired mic that goes right into my computer and it's a USB-C but you also found one that uh, that my friend could use on her older PC as well with a regular USB. Can you tell us a little bit about like uh, simple setups to start with? Because a lot of people are probably teachers or they just want to sound better than their iPhone or their computer is going to make them sound. Sure. Let me switch to what, what I'm going to switch to now is I'm going to use the um, use the mixer and switch to a different mic. I'm going to switch to the shotgun microphone just so you get a little. All right, so now I'm actually using the Soundbird T3 shotgun microphone. For home, that's not what people are going to be using. This is more for like film use and um, and and sound effects and things like that, but it gives you a much more bassy, more, more realistic sound. That's why people use these type of microphones. But yeah. really when you're at home and you're, you're trying to find a mic just to sound better in your Zoom meetings, to sound better when you're, when you're doing a presentation or something like that, a simple USB microphone like the ULM10 or the ULM10L are excellent USB microphones. The USB A to your computer, and um, the, the L is for long, longer cable. The, the the ULM10 is just a shorter cable, about six feet, which is an average. But if I'm pacing around the room, or really moving around, the the, the, the larger one is a bit better for you. Um, besides that, you, you know you don't have to be wired to your, to your to your your computer. There are wireless options, and you don't have to have a USB interface even on your computer. Many of modern computers now have the the um, headphone input, which actually doubles as a um, a microphone input. You can use normal right. headset microphones like um, I don't know where my headset microphone is right here. One second, my apologies. So basically, what you would regularly plug in for your headsets, you can also use for a mic. Yeah, yeah. This is the. Um, sorry about that. Just turned it down for a moment. This is just a. This is just a pair of workout headphones I have, and they have a mic on it. It's. Just, but but the the cable on it is a TRRS. So um, the, if I plug that into my computer and I can actually hear sound, like like if I can hear the sound from the mic, that means your computer is capable of using a professional microphone directly into the TRRS connector. Right. For instance, something like when it comes to wireless. Excuse me. When it comes to wireless, you have something like the 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 um, Blink 500 system. This is this is the standard um, camera camera mounted mixer or camera mounted receiver. This can handle up to two wireless lavaliers. Uh, bear with me one moment. Everything is yeah. everywhere. This yeah. this is if, the Blink transmitter. That, no, I'm going to share my screen because I think I have a link that you would send me for the Blink system. Absolutely. You can see that, right? Yes, the, the, the one or something, right? So that connects to your iPhone or your computer. Yes, the, the one of the, on the top left is the B1, which is basically what I have in my hand right here, which is a, um, a, a little, little transmitter with a microphone directly on it. This can be used as, a, as the microphone itself by just clip, clipping it to your collar, or it actually comes with a lavalier. Of course, everything's a bit tangled up. I'm actually wearing the lavalier right now. Um, so so, so you could literally plug this into your, your laptop's headphone input, and then you have a wireless microphone. You can use it handheld like this, or you can clip it to your collar, or you can plug in the lavalier as I have right here, plugged right in. So I can be doing presentations. I could be walking around the room, having a conversation. And especially with programs like Zoom, which are so cool, you could actually set up the mic to be an external mic, but the speakers to actually use the, the, um, the speakers on, on, your, on, your, um, on your device, on your laptop. So I'm hearing through the speakers on the laptop, similar to what you're doing right now, and I'm talking through through a, a, a la lavalier, whether wired or wire wireless, and there's they're not going to be any feedback issues, or not going to be anything like that. But you get a better sounding mic, you're more free to move, especially for teachers, people who like therapists, um, people who are doing trainings, like like uh, physical yoga health trainings. Yeah, yoga. I always think of yoga instructors because I do a lot of like yoga at home now. And obviously like you're doing it a lot of times through your computer or your iPhone or something like that, but you can't be connected to your computer like that if you're doing those movements and you're actually really far away and you're trying to demonstrate something. Right, or if you just wanna like walk around the room and, and, and discuss things. Sometimes, yeah. especially in my life, my kids are running around and I'm actually taking care of them, but I'm still on the meeting. I'm listening to the meetings. I can mute my microphone while I'm not talking, but I'm in the kitchen making, making some breakfast and my boss, he's like, hey, Joe, what do you think of that? And I 
dial right in, boom, wirelessly right to the computer. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm talking without missing a beat. And that's a, that's a real cool thing. Yeah. And sound is so again, essential. It's really nice to be able to have flexibility with that. Like this has worked out really well for me, just having uh, a wired microphone because I have enough slack here if I needed to move around, but I don't really plan on like not being close to my computer. So it, it works out fine. And it's super easy because I just plug it in. Yeah. And if, if you're wireless, you can pretend you're like some power executive walking around, you know, yelling at people and it's so much more fun. Yeah. yeah. It, also, it, it looks like a pager, you know, like an old. Oh, yeah. So that's perfect. <laughs> oh, my two way, my two ways blow up, blowing up. Hold on a second. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> exactly. I'm being paged. Excuse me. Many people don't know what the hell we're talking about. I know. I was just thinking that I was like, oh my God, there's so many people who actually have no idea what that means. <laughs> Let's talk about VHS tapes too, then. Let's just go yeah. right in. <laughs> Well, you, you mentioned actually the, the ones that the, the blink systems that go on, on, on like with uh, mobile devices, for instance, there's also the uh, mobile receiver here. This is the DI receiver and this is the UC receiver. Mm -hmm. These, these go right under your device. Like if I was going to go into my Android phone, I would use my UC. This also plugs right into my USB-C on my computer, which is really cool. Right. Or you have the, or you have the lightning input, like on my iPad here, literally just plugging it right in. God, I better look. Right now I have, I have up to two wireless microphones going into my iPad so I can stream like this. I'm getting a lot of calls from churches and, um, and, and, and preachers and people doing all sorts of different things that they do in the nor normal life, but they need, to, they need to live stream and they need to have people be able to hear it. There's yeah. so many options out there. I mean, not only with, 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 with ceremonic, but, but so many microphone options out there. Yeah. People just um, need a little guidance to get the best, the best sound out of it. So we have a question. First question is also from a girl named Kelly. Hello, Kelly. I am Kelly as well. Uh, it says, hello, is the Blink system the most versatile for working from home? The most versatile. I think it's the most versatile in, in a few ways. And, um, and, and one being that you don't have to have the lavalier hooked up to it. You can literally just talk, talk to it like this. So I, so I can hold it like this. I can clip it to my collar. Obviously, the lavalier is a bit more freeing. You can use it like a traditional belt pack. This is a bit large um, to, to do that. But of course, I could just place it on the table here. And when it's my turn to speak, un well, don't drop it like I did, but unmute it and then and then get right to, right, right to chatting. Besides that, the, the receivers are dual. So, um, you know, for not that much money, you get, a, you get a wireless system with one transmitter. You can always add on the transmitter later or, or buy the dual system. So having two wireless microphones for such an inexpensive price is a pretty versatile it is a pretty versatile way to go yeah. so I, I think so and the the ability to actually add a, um, a mobile receiver to the device you choice is, is also pretty useful that's pretty great uh, for bloggers and stuff too because i know that obviously a lot of teachers are working from home now all that kind of stuff in the video that i made i kind of emphasize the fact that you could be just using your computer like we are right now or an iphone or you might be using a dslr or something like that so the blink is nice because the blink 500 you could do with either you can yes. be recording for, for either scenario. When I, when I walked around my, my room here, I was walking around walls because you know, I have a huge wall behind me and there's lots of obstacles and stuff. The Blink system is, much, is, is great for line of sight and in controlled environments. But when you're walking through walls and going into like other rooms and stuff, you might want to get a, a UHF system and it, that gives you a little more robust wireless use. But for most people, they're in front of the camera or they're right to the side of the camera. They're still line of sight. And that's where a Blink system is in, in these type of 2.4 gigahertz systems are useful. But when you really need like, um, for instance, we were, in, we were at NAB and I was going in between people and I actually walked about 300 feet away from the booth showing how, how, how far a system could go. Only a UHF system is going to handle that. Obviously, I don't think anybody's going 300 feet from their, their computer today, but right. you know, it, it, it's something good to know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you're going to be doing something a little more advanced or maybe you're somebody who's been doing this for a long time, but now you're upping your game. That's another reason I had like the two scenarios is kind of like using your iPhone or your computer or, you know, now you're actually using a real camera, you're recording your, your audio separately for some reason and it's actual record situation as opposed to a live scenario. Absolutely. And you also had a mixer, right? You had mentioned having a mixer so that you can actually control the audio on your end. Well, that actually is right here. Um, I went to the small camera here. Th this is a um, this is the smart rig mixer, and what this is this is smart rig UC, and I have it going into my computer, which is real cool. But it's really designed for um, USB C mobile devices. Um, 
you, you know, it, it can go into my, my, um, my Android phone. It can go into um, my computer. It can go to anything that's USB-C. There's a lightning version as well. And then there's also a, um, a TRRS version, which I have in my hand right here. And this actually goes out to a mini plug. So I could plug this into my laptop here, into the, into the headphone port. And I could also plug this into, into, into cell phones that have um, headphone ports. But the cool thing about this is it has a switch on it, which allows you to switch to camera. So I can actually plug it into a DSLR mirrorless or even, even something like the um, RX100, the new RX, RX100. And you have two professional microphone inputs in it as well as having mini plug microphone inputs as well and quarter inch inputs in, in addition. One of the cool thing I actually no, noticed when I was actually setting this up is you can actually have four mics plugged into this at once. You're not gonna have individual level controls and that's why I don't, I'm not doing it. Right. But you can really rig this thing to go, to go crazy. And um, for someone like, someone, someone who has like a, a, um, a, a laptop for instance, which can handle TRRS inputs, I could plug this in and plug two professional microphones into it and have a headphone monitoring what's coming out of the head, headphone port there extraordinarily easily doing the podcasts or um, live streams. And you, you see it for yourself. I'm using, I'm using the UC right now for a live stream. I've never done it before. I did it today and it works great. Yeah. So why would someone potentially want a mixer? Can you explain it? Like does someone who's just like a teacher who might just want to plug in or something like that, like would it benefit them? Who's the type of person who might want to do more fine tuning? Well, the, the first reason you'd want a mixer is because you have more than one signal. If you have more than one signal, you have to either merge them together with a, like a Y cable or you have to have a mixer. Um, a mixer is going to allow you to either, either mix them in, into, because um, you have, you have, you have, you have uh, mono and stereo. Uh, so you have left and right in, in, in the stereo feed, like on a camera or a cell phone. You can mix two microphones together, two microphones being mono, into the stereo signal where they both come out to, through both left and right. He, um, left and right sides, or you can actually have them go separate. For instance, I want I want Billy on 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 input one, and I want I want Mikey on input two. Mikey's too loud, so I can turn Mikey down. While Billy's too low, I can turn Billy up. And the 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 cool thing about that as well is when they're split in post, you can actually adjust the levels individually. Oh, you know you know Mikey was too close to a car going by. Let me at, let me cut him out of, of this of this scene when he wasn't talking and bring him back up a little later. So you can mix all that stuff out in post, which is extraordinarily useful. Yeah, so especially if someone is like uh, doing news from home or something, that's something else that we keep getting questions like in terms of like lighting and video and that kind of stuff. There are people who are actually having to do the news from their home. There might be two people who are, you know, like social distancing and all that stuff, but they're six feet away and they're recording in a really small situation like this and they have to talk at the same time. And then maybe they would use a mixer because basically one person maybe has a higher volume naturally than the other person does. Or you can use a dual wireless system that allows you to, to actually do that do that type of mixing internally, which um, which we, we do have some of the the, um, the UW Mic Nine is a dual dual wireless system that actually splits that to left and right. So it is possible to do it with one unit, but it all depends on people's needs. Sometimes people need six seven microphones going into one. You know, I'd really suggest something like a um, a recorder for that to get individual feeds. But yeah. some people want to be able to go right, 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 right to production because it's a live stream, or if it's or if it's a um, performance like a church, you know, and you, you have you have a mic, you have a mic on the pastor, you ha you have a mic on on the singer, you have you, you have a mic on the um, or you have an output from the keyboard player. A lot of people are doing this, and they're asking me via email, "How do I do this?" And many times it's just like, "Hey, you know, you want you want to stick that into your phone, no problem." Just get an interface that will allow you to put that into your phone, whether it be a smart rig or even just a proper cable to get it into your phone right out of the mixer's report output. So there's lots of different options. And when you um, when you think about it, it, it audio seems like crazy. It, it seems like, oh, how am I going to get over this hump? Yeah. When I, when I explain to people how I learned audio, it, it sounds ridiculous. It's literally just faking it till you make it. Um, with, with video and lighting, I think about optics and I think about... Uh, Kelvin and all this other crazy nonsense, I'm out. Let someone else take care of that. Audio I'll stick to because I know it. Anyone can, can, can understand audio. It's just, it's just taking a little time to, um, to learn and, and ask the right questions. Yeah. And it does seem overwhelming. I think that there are even people who are video professionals that get a little overwhelmed by the idea of audio because it feels and seems so, so complicated and so different than what it is that they're doing that's focused on a visual aspect of it. I mean, there's a reason on film sets that there's someone completely dedicated to just the audio. 
Um, so, I mean, I have to obviously do videos from home now and I, I don't even have someone monitoring my audio as I'm talking, if I'm in a video or something like that. So I really have to make sure that what I'm doing is foolproof and then yeah. watch it later and do all that kind of stuff. So we did have a question come in. Um, let me see. Okay. So if, if someone doesn't want to wear a microphone, if for some reason, someone really just doesn't want to have something attached to them, what might be their best option? Well, the easiest option for someone is a, um, an on-camera microphone, like something like a, um, like I have right here, the, the can the cam mic, um, this is the cam mic on this, on this mirrorless camera, or even, even on, on the lower end, I have, I have this little SRXM1 microphone on it. Just something to get the, the, the audio out of the camera's audio because the, the microphone on the camera is the cheapest thing on there. It's, it, it, it's almost like a cup holder in a car. It's an afterthought. Everything else is designed around it. Like put a cup holder in it. The, the microphone is, is not really great. So literally just utilize your, your, your microphone input, put an on-camera microphone on it. I can switch to, I'm actually had the shotgun microphone above me, which I'm, which we're listening to now. I can switch to an on-camera microphone, which of which I'm about, about three feet away. And you can, okay. you can hear, and what it hear the difference. Like. And it, it, it'll, it'll give you an option. It'll give you a, um, an idea of, of what, um, what, what it will sound like in a real situation. Bear with me just one second. Yeah, no worries. So you'll basically be able to hear the difference between that microphone and the, and the one you're speaking through right now. Exactly. I mean, this is this is a professional shotgun microphone that I'm speaking yeah. through right now. So, so what you get? Yeah, like interviews on documentaries, that kind of stuff is usually what you might use that for. Yeah, but also um, you're also going to find a boom operator using them in most cases because if I roll over here, I'm off access, and if I'm you know if I'm further on, that's why a boom operator yeah. is is pointing it at who's talking, and they have to really understand the script more than sometimes even the director does because they need to know yeah. who's talking when. Yeah, absolutely. And you have to make sure that it's actually pointing directly at the person's mouth. So not just are they moving over there, but where they're actually talking from and what direction. But the most inexpensive way to get a good good audio for your camera is a good on-camera microphone. And you could literally spend 60 bucks, even, even as low as $25 and get a, a great on-camera microphone. That's going to hugely impact the sound of your camera. What I have here is the, um, the V-Mic Mini. I'm going to switch to that right now. Okay, this is the V mic mini and um, sorry I don't have this to show you right here but it's um, extraordinarily small microphone. It's about that big. You, you can literally put it on your camera and throw it in your camera bag at any given time. There she is right there. Um, awesome microphone. The cool thing about this microphone is it just, it, it sounds good, it's inexpensive. And, and when it comes with a, an, a cable that goes into your DSLR or mirrorless camera, as well as one that goes into your mobile device via TRRS. So you can have it go into your cell phone uh, or, or, or a tablet or even your, um, or even your, your laptop with the TRS inputs on, TRRS inputs on your laptop. So I could put this on top of my laptop right here and have an on-camera microphone there. Inexpensive, easy to use. Th these are perfect for people who are just trying to step up the audio or even people who are doing run and gun. Because if I'm out in the street and I'm just talking to people, they don't want to be like, hey, let me clip this on your collar. I don't know you, man. Step away from me. Nobody, yeah. not every, also, not every situation is like that. Six feet away, obviously. Exactly. Exactly. Well, one, especially today. But something yeah. like this is, is going to pull the sound, you know, get direct, more directional sound from your camera and make it easy, especially in the run and gun scenarios. It, it's a much better way to be. So quick I just, I just want to, I just want to apologize for one thing. If I'm making weird sounds when I'm moving around in this ball. I just want to let you know that's not my stomach or anything making that but I noise. Do love, I do love that you have the mobility that you have because you're like, let me roll over here and show you this thing. Like that really, <laughs> I think it's essential, you know? I actually Definitely. have a question for like in general, like I know the answer to this, but there might be people who are very, very basic in audio and don't understand. Why might you have this piece of foam on it versus just having the bare microphone? Well, foam windscreen you would think oh i don't need that indoors but even moving a microphone just like this is going it's going to give you a rush of wind so that foam windscreen is going to stop that rush of wind when you're in a really really windy environment like outside like um on a windy street or outside even my, my, my house today a furry windscreen is always going to be better but this is going to stop um the rushes of wind you're going to get from moving the microphone quickly as well as as well as wind noise uh, in in most most scenarios for really high winds um high, high wind environments like a beach or outdoors today where it's crazy windy you do need a furry windscreen and that'll that'll dissipate a lot of that wind noise because the fur it, the fur the fur take takes that sound and, and makes it go away it does cut off a little bit of the higher frequencies 
putting a windscreen on, especially your furry windscreen, which can be compensated with EQ. And some, some of our microphones and some of the microphones in the market have actually a little frequency bump to compensate for that. So I have another question then, because on my microphone, I definitely have like a small windscreen. If I take that off, does it matter when I'm indoors? So like it's off right yes. now? Yes. It, you know, even if you weren't moving around, you're going to get blasts of air from your mouth um, because we get Plosives. excited sometimes. Yeah, exactly. My Plosives. favorite word, plosives. It sounds like what it is. Exactly. The, the, the yeah. pop you hear from, 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 my, um, from a microphone or just that, that really real boom. It, 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 can ruin, it can ruin your audio. And a lot of times when I was doing film sound, um, like ADR is huge. You, you're trying to, you're trying to cut out where, the, where there's a plosive or someone didn't say something right. But most of the time I was cutting up people's audio because they just got too excited and there was a big, big plosive there. So. Right, right. It's, it is one of my favorite words because it's a onomatopoeia. Is that what it's called? When something sounds like what it is? I never met her. Yeah, plosive. Um, so we did, we don't have a question, but we do have a comment. Hi, RC. RC Concepcion is watching right now and I love him and he's a great educator. Uh, he said that we are recommending more and more the Blink system in journalism classes because of how easy it is to use on an iPhone. Yeah, so we, that's we, just a comment, but. <laughs> I definitely appreciate that. As brand manager for Ceramonic, I appreciate that comment. And we, I love RC. I, I saw him up in Syracuse right, a couple right. months ago and I can't wait to see him next, next year. Yeah, he has really great videos and stuff too on uh, educational stuff. Uh, can you think of anything else, Joe, like in terms of like basic stuff that people can do? I think I came across one of these uh, microphones that directly connects to an iPhone. Let me see if I can find it. You had sent a link to it. Basically, it's like right to an iPhone and, and it's directly connected to it. And it's a little like- You're talking about, talking about the Smart Mic Plus. And that's, yeah. it, it looks a lot like the, the V Mic Mini when I pull this windscreen off. Um, very similar in des design, but what this has is a, a lightning port on it. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see in the camera, but a headphone port as well. Um, literally, you can just pop it on the wrong side. You gotta have the right side. Yeah pop it into your lightning port and, and start filming. So right here, I have, a, I have a, shot, a shotgun, or not really a shotgun, but a directional microphone right there um, to, to go. And also I can flip it back via, um, it, cause it could go any direction you want. So I can be in selfie mode and filming. Hey, I'm sitting here at the beach. These are little, these are excellent microphones that, that give you um, real flexibility. What the microphone you have on the screen is actually the smart, the smart mic that goes into if you have a headphone port on, on your device, like my, my phone, an older Android has a headphone port as well as um, old, that older iPhone on the screen. That's the smart mic. And that's a directional microphone. I'm sorry, that's an omnidirectional microphone with a swivel that allows you to get a much better sound, much more focused. Even though it is Omni, it's still much more focused than, than the in, internal microphones on there. And it's certainly a jump up in quality. I have one sitting around here somewhere. Actually, I have it on my... I have it on my, my, my other phone right here. Oh, so, there you go. Yeah, that's, you're, that's you're the like smart me, light. But with actual sound, because I have like NAN lights just like all over my apartment and I have just like different lights that I can use for different things. Yeah. So it, it's completely hemispherical, meaning I could actually just go whoop and right here I'm in selfie mode or yeah. I'm filming something. It's just like, whoa, did you yeah. see that? Oh my goodness, I cannot believe that I, that was, you know, yeah. I'm not very good improv. So, <laughs> so what I'm noticing as somebody, again, who doesn't do... Uh, audio professionally, but still messes around with audio because obviously I do video. Um, there's basically, you have to figure out what it is that you're doing, right? Like if someone asked you, what do I need for audio? I know that people used to ask me this. We both used to work at b and I was a, a video executive producer and I also used to be in marketing. So I basically used to answer a lot of questions, but it was always like, what's the cheapest camera I can get <laughs> that will make yes. everything look cinematic? And so I know you used to get and still get questions about basically, you know, what's what's the easiest way to get better audio? Um, yeah. Like, first you have to ask what that person's doing, right? It's it's always about what you what you're doing. Um, you know, people want to be versatile. So, but you but say, hey, what are you gonna do with your camera? It's like you're not doing one thing. You're gonna be filming multiple things. I might be vlogging one day. I might be filming like a um, like an interview on the street. I might be uh, I might be doing a feature, but right. think about what you're doing first. Right. If you have if you have if you have an opportunity for 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 one microphone or one microphone solution, it's all about what are you mostly going to be doing with it. Like um, I bought I bought a, a car recently, and um, my my main focus was having enough room in the back seat so the kids weren't kicking the back of my seat. 
<laughs> that was my main focus. I wanted it to look cool. sexy and I wanted, to, yeah, I wanted it to drive great, but yeah. it had to be, so they were the kids were bang, bang, bang. There's nothing like that for a six hour drive. Yeah. So, so I look for a little, I look for, for a longer body. Right. So, th but th that's the thing. It's like, what are you going to be doing? Well, I'm probably going to be doing interviews one or two people. Normally what I do is actually, I actually just interview one person. Are you asking them questions? No, it's actually just, just kind of that. And I do some talking head stuff. Well, then a, a wireless lavalier would probably be the best option for you. Oh, I, I actually do interviews on the street. I'm doing some, um, I'm doing, doing some stuff in the studio. I want to be able to just, just go out and check out, check out the city and, and walk around. Um, an on-camera microphone is the best choice for that because it's more versatile. I'm yeah. doing film sound and I, and, and I want to, to make sure that I have the best dialogue possible. A shotgun microphone on a boom pole with a boom operator. I don't have yeah. that option. Then put lavaliers on each person yeah. and, a boom, and, and, and a boom mic overall to, to grab the room tone. Mm -hmm. So you know so many I actually just got very inspired to like, let's play like a little game where I just throw a scenario at you and you throw what microphone I should be wearing, uh, like uh, using for that. <laughs> All right. if, I, if I'm a teacher and I'm in a scenario like this where we're just kind of talking at the computers, what are some options that I have for that? Well, if you're a teacher and you're speaking right now in the computer, are you sitting down like that the whole time? The, the, the key with, when you're talking to somebody and trying to find out what mic it is, it, it, there's always a, a number of questions to get to the, the bottom of it. Are right. you going to be just sitting there in front of it or are you going to be doing lesson plans against a chalkboard? Are you going to be moving around or are you going to be extremely focused and, and, and right there? That would be my first question. And what would your answer be? So let's say it's just what I'm doing right now and I'm just talking directly to the students. I don't have an eraser board. I don't have anything and I'll pretty much stay where I am. Then I would probably choose a USB microphone that plugs right into it. You can use a program like Zoom or any of these other um, WebEx or something like that to, to, to do to do your meetings and, and, um, and lessons and just be plugged right into there. It's completely, um, it, it's going to be the, the, the most natural way to pick up your voice because an omnidirectional lavalier and most, most lavaliers are going to be omnidirectional. They allow you to be, um, they allow you to move naturally. So I'm turning my head. Uh, I don't know if you can hear it with this microphone, but as I turn my head, I'm off axis. But when I have an, a, a lavalier on, because it's omnidirectional, it picks up much more naturally, it picks up the dialogue more naturally. I can move uh, much easier than have to constantly be, make sure I'm on access at all times, which can, can be troubling. So that's what I would suggest is a USB microphone right into your computer. Awesome. And so if I am a teacher that needs an eraser board or needs to move around to demonstrate something, or I'm a yoga teacher and I am kind of moving around and doing what I need, what would you suggest for that? Well, I'm kind of partial to our products. So I'm going to, I'm going to actually suggest, I would really yeah. suggest something like the, the Blink system yeah. because it allows you to actually put the microphone on your collar or even, even just use the um, transmitter itself. And you can, and you can move, move around and have it plugged in, in into your computer or even your phone and, and, and give you that option. And if, if you have actually someone with you doing a training, you can get, get a second mic for it. That's what I would suggest for that type of scenario. Okay. And then what if I am using a DSLR? So there is so many other things that we could dive into and there's so many more videos we could make about various ways of doing this stuff. Cause obviously even just live streaming, you could have a switcher, you could have be doing all these various different things. But if I am like a vlogger and I'm trying to step it up a little bit, um, what would you suggest for someone who's like a vlogger kind of doing a role for themselves and trying to make it sound as professional as possible? Well, it really depends on how far they're gonna be from the camera. A vlogger, when I see a vlogger, I, I think about holding the camera right at arm's length, you know, kind of almost like in, in selfie mode. For something like that, an on-camera microphone is usually the best way to go. Even if it's with a, um, even if it's with a, a smart device, like a smartphone or something like that. Something like the, um, you know, something that plugs into your, in, into your phone, you can get that. Or so if you need something for your camera, something like the V-Mic Minis you saw a moment ago. It's small, it's compact, it gives you a much better sound and it's focused on you. So right. that's what I would suggest for a vlogger. Okay, cool. And the Blink 500 would work in a scenario like that too, right? Because if you were sure. far away from your camera or right up close, obviously if you just have a microphone on you, it's gonna work out well too. Yeah, like like I mentioned a moment ago, proximity is everything to microphones. So if yeah. if, if I if I change the proximity by, by moving this over a little bit, you hear the difference. So it's Absolutely. Just, so the same thing is true with if, if if I move from 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 two feet away to five feet away to 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 seven feet away, the proximity is going to be a huge thing, and that's why wireless lavaliers are usually the the, the choice. Um, one thing that I like to tell people, and, and one thing people should know, is the frequency response of a lavalier is going to be much more compact. Mm 
It's, it's going to cut off a lot of the higher highs and the lower lows. And should really be focused on the, the, the dialogue frequencies. So we can sound a little bit thinner. So if you can have a shotgun microphone or an on-camera microphone, and that's good, if you can stand in a decent proximity, you're going to get a better, wider frequency response. But the a lavalier, like the Blink system or any wireless lavalier, is, is going to give you the freedom that most people desire. And that's why they're so popular. Yeah, because people need to move around for some of the things that they're doing, and they don't have somebody who's booming and running around after them trying to make sure they sound good. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no doubt. <laughs> so RC, our good friend, actually asked a question. He said, uh, can one mic versus another mic help with the, halo, the, the hollow sound you can get in a room? Some teachers want to move from a webcam mic to possibly a shotgun mic to make it not sound so hollow. I think you kind of just answered that, but if you could elaborate well, on it, that'd be great. Yeah, actually, um, with the hollow sound can be a problem with, um, with with shotgun microphones, especially. And like, I have a very small ceiling. You could see it right there. Very short ceiling there. Um, luckily, I have the microphone close enough to me that actually you can hear it very well. So you're not getting as as, as much of a hollow sound as a um, as a as as a on camera microphone that's a further distance away because it's right on top of me. But for most scenarios like that, if you were really to do it the professional way, you use a cardioid um, pencil microphone. And um, the reason why is because um, this is a this is a cardioid microphone. This is the Soundbird um, V3, and this is a cool microphone because it gives you a wider wider response. It's also a cardioid. It's not so focused like a super cardioid. A super cardioid literally just bangs, point it right at you, slightly 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 a bit wider, but cardioid go, goes a little bit wider. And the the pencil microphones allow you to get, in, especially in smaller rooms, right above where you need to be, and um, and don't pick up all that that booming hollowness that you can get obviously um this is what i had right now and this is a great microphone so this is why i chose it but a um but because of the interference tube on, on, a, on a shotgun microphone what this does is it rejects from the side and the rear but 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 when, when it's focused on you and there's you do get reverberations you're not going to get as as many many of that as much as that that hollowness with a short pencil microphone something like um I'm going to rec I, I could recommend a Sheps, but it's a little bit outside of my price point, but that's pretty much what the professionals will use in, in a pinch. A, a good shotgun microphone would work so much better than a lavalier or an on-camera microphone, but um, the true pros are going to use um, a, a really short, a really short pencil cardioid. Cool. We actually, we have another question from someone named Alexandra. She wants to know, is there anything I can change in the room itself? Uh, for the best recording quality. I have I have some answers for that too. I mean, I would say as a filmmaker, you just make sure there's no like weird noises happening. If there's an air conditioner on, you might want to shut it off. If there's yeah. sound coming in, uh, if you do have a sound blanket or even if you don't have a sound blanket and you're just like a teacher who's shooting in their house, even if you took a quilt and put it against the windows or a place where sound is coming out, it can kind of muffle that sound to to eliminate it a little bit. That would be what I say. What about, what about you, Joe? Do you have any other things? Absolutely. I mean, right now, I don't know if you can hear it, but you, you might be able to hear the um, the raid array that my wife has in the other room. I mean, I was listening to, to I was testing the microphones like, what is that sound? Is it is it electrical? And I figured out it was the raid array. I have a heater right next to me that actually will, will kick on from time to time. Right. Um, it, it, it's all about closing that area and sound blankets is a great choice. If you don't have a sound blanket, as you said, um, as you as you said, like a, a quilt or something like that, or even a big pillow, you know, blocking certain areas, put, putting yeah. it like, I might be getting, um, I have a corner right there. If I was to throw this in the corner, it's actually going to stop a lot of the, it's going to stop a lot of the bass reverberations and actually can stop some of that noise. There's so many different ways to do it. The, the easiest way to, would be probably quilts and, and creating like a baffling with those quilts or even a sound blanket yeah. in, in the office we have we, we have an we have a, a really noisy room which you guys turned into a, a little studio and what you did is you put some grommets up and put a sound blanket blocking the door yep. and it sounds so much better already just a simple twenty dollar sound blanket you don't even need that even need that i have a um i have an under uh, under carpet piece that i bought from um from ikea that i'm covering up a power supply because it was kind of noisy i just threw it on top of that there's so many different yeah. ways to do it but the, the real key is, is if, um, if I'm in a noisy room and it, it, if there's a lot of reverberations, get the mic closer and actually turn, turn the mic down. So, so turn the gain down, get as close to the subject as possible. I mean, obviously you don't want something like this, but you know, right out, right outside of you. Perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. Perfect. And, um, 
you're gonna you're gonna be able to turn that down, and not pick up so many of the reverberations, and that's why I mentioned a moment ago those the small um, cardioid condenser microphones as pencils. Those are always the best choice in that in that room. Yeah, I think those are great tips, Joe. Thank you so much. I don't think that there are any other questions. Is there anything else you can think that we didn't talk about that might be helpful? You, you know, um, we, a couple questions actually like lean into this, and um, one thing that that I think. Somebody asked me once via an Amazon chat I was on. They asked me, they're like, "Well, how do I get rid of?" I did, I did a, um, I did a recording on the beach, and the recording was awesome, but it's just the waves and the sounds and the seagulls was just so much it drowns out everything. And what I told her to do, and this is what I suggest everyone everyone does with their with their with their vocals, your vocal lives in a certain area. Okay, if I'm a if if I'm if I'm a deep deep voiced man, it's going to live in the lower side. If I if I'm a you know. If I'm a high voice voice woman, it's going to live on the higher side. But with a parametric EQ and um, that actually shows you the um, the frequency analyzer, you can see where your voice lives. Right. And what you can do with that parametric EQ, and this uh, any decent video editing software is going to have this. You can actually put a low end a low end frequency cut and a high end frequency cut with I think it's a 48 dB curve. And for me, my voice sits basically. I, I think I cut it around. Um, 90 hertz on the on the low end i cut everything everything lower than 90 hertz and everything above 8000 hertz i cut that off and that's about where my voice lives and it, it actually does not make it sound filtered out but it filters out all that excess and what happens when you do that is if i was on the beach or if i was on the street you wouldn't hear the cars going by as much it's focused on my voice you wouldn't hear the the ocean if i was at the beach as much you'd still hear it but it wouldn't be so intense and not only that, when you look at your, um, when you look at headroom and you look at the, the decibel levels, um, it gives you extra headroom. And what headroom is, imagine like a, a fish tank. You're looking at the fish, but it's surrounded by water. Headroom is, um, is say if I, wanted, if I wanted that fish to be bigger so I could see it, the water starts to overflow. And that, that, that's when your, your, your audio starts to, um, starts to peak out and it sounds, sounds, sounds garbagey. So if I got rid of all that extra water on the side and the fish, the fish got to grow a little bit and I could see the fish better, then, then I could turn the level up. So basically what I'm saying is it allows you, it, filtering out all, all, all those, all those uh, high and low frequencies will give you about two to 10 dB of headroom. So that means you could turn it up without overloading and your voice can be louder and it's not gonna really overload your audio source. I hope that wasn't too complicated and too complicated. No, I actually but. really like that as a visual because again, I'm more of a visual person. So actually being able to visualize that made me have a better understanding of the concept of the sound. That's Excellent. cool. Thanks, Joe. So we have yeah. one more comment and uh, basically uh, people are mentioning that they also have done like voiceover work for clients and closets and stuff because I was actually going to mention this. Doug, who used to do our videos at, at BH, he used to do podcasts and voiceovers for other things, and he would go into his closet. So when we were talking about like uh, sound blankets and quilts and stuff, like if, if you're not doing video and you're just kind of doing a podcast or something like that, you can actually just go into your closet. And if you're surrounded by just like the absorption of your clothes, that could actually give you better audio. A lot, a lot of people recorded records in a bathroom because the tiles gave them a nice reverb. Certainly you can do that. And that leads me to actually a, a great point. Um, a, a lot of people, when they're doing podcasts, they see um, like they're looking at the Joe Rogan podcast or they're looking at a professional podcast. They see a video and they see these large microphones or a lot. So a lot of times they gravitate towards large diaphragm condensers. And what you get with a large diaphragm condenser is exactly that, a large diaphragm that's extraordinarily sensitive. So it's going to pick up um, the sounds outside. It's going to pick up the dog barking, the fire trucks going by, as well as your HVAC system and all those other things. Um, uh, our friend Brenda at work, she asked me for a friend. A friend wanted to do some voiceover. She said, what's the best mic for him? I suggested a dynamic, a dynamic handheld for that situation because it, it's going to focus on her, her voice and it's not going to pick up all those other things in the room, especially because the room wasn't treated. Yeah. And of course, she's probably working in her apartment or home and there's a lot of, a lot of atmospheric sounds. It's going to give you a, a better sound. And this is why you're going to see when you, I mentioned the Joe Rogan podcast or the Mark Marin podcast, they actually use dynamic microphones. They use the larger dy dynamic microphones like by Shure or by Electro Voice. Those are great for podcasts because they focus on the voice. But um, you could certainly take it in the closet. 
but is that always the best place to do it? Sometimes you just want to sit back oh, at your yeah. desk and do a voiceover. <laughs> and this is where a dynamic microphone sometimes would be your best bet. A simple handheld dynamic that sounds good. Um, the, 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 the Ceremonic HM7 is awesome. Bear with me one second, I'm gonna grab something. <laughs> okay, so what kind of, uh, is that the, the microphone that you're referring to? Yes, this is the uh, HM7UC. This is like the HM7, which is an XLR microphone, but this is a USB-C microphone. Um, it has a headphone port on there as well, and it's USB-C. The cool thing about this, and this is what I suggested to Brenda, she could do voiceovers. Her friend could do voiceovers on her computer by plugging into the, her computer with a USB-A cable, or she can actually do it in, into her iPhone by plugging into her uh, with, with the DI version, right, in, right into it with a lightning cable. So for this, I, I do voiceovers. Um, Dan at work, he, he had, I messed up, I flubbed a line on the video I did and I, I used this mic right into my computer and I, and I read the line and I sent it to him. He, he said it didn't fit, but still I did it quick, you know? And it was noisy in the room and, I, I, and my kids were going crazy, but I took it, as you said, like I took it in another room, took it in the bathroom yeah. and did the vocal. So yeah. something like this is gonna be much better than those type of large diaphragm microphones for most podcasters and most people doing voiceovers. Why do you think the podcasters are using the other kind of microphones then? Well, if you look at the pros, they're using um, large diaphragm, um, large diaphragm dynamic microphones, but the, but the, the people think they're using large diaphragm condensers, which because that's what they see at the store and that's what they see like the Blue Yeti and things like that, which are awesome microphones. But the reason they're using those large diaphragm um, dynamics is because it does not suffer from proximity effect. They can move around more naturally, and they can also move off access, and it's not going to pick up any of the noise. That's why they're using that type of microphone. But you know, as a layman, they see it. They see a huge, huge studio microphone, and then they suddenly hear every dog in the neighborhood on their podcast. So right. it's just something I, I wanted to bring up because a lot of customers ha have that issue, and they're like, "I need something for my podcast. I need something for a voiceover." Think, yeah. think about what you're doing. Think about the first of all the um, the place you're doing it. Your environment is, is huge. Yeah, I've actually been hiring a lot of voiceover artists for different videos that we've been doing and stuff. And it's amazing what a lot of these uh, professionals are doing from their home and then sending you the final product. Like here's the voiceover. If you need me to do more takes by all means, but they have their mic set up. They have uh, various, like they probably have like a space that they just always do their voiceover that's treated a little bit, maybe with sound blankets and stuff like that. Um, it's definitely mm -hmm. something else that people can do in terms of setting up a studio at home. It's usually always a treated room, those guys. And this is why these guys are professional. They set something up in their home and they have a proper, a proper setup. They have the proper mics for their scenario. And it's not an easy thing because um, I've tried to do voiceovers just, just for like, like I said a moment ago for our videos. And if you're not set up for it, 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 it can be challenging. Thank you so much, Joe. I don't think there's any other questions, but I definitely think that we answered a lot of the ones for people who are doing some basic stuff. So uh, I just want to emphasize people can basically subscribe to Sarah Monik's channel, YouTube channel. So you mentioned a couple of videos that you've done that go even deeper into it. So if people want to check some of those out, they can go to Sarah Monik's YouTube channel. Uh, we also are like lighting ourselves with Nan Light Light. So we have the video that I made which goes a little bit into audio, but also just into specific setting up video in your own house kind of a thing. Uh, that's on the Nanlite USA YouTube channel. And then we're on photo video EDU right now. So subscribe to this channel as well. Okay, thank you, Joe. Always good talking to you, friend. Thank you. Stay safe, bye. bye